You've heard of Stanley Cups. You may have heard about them in the news, about people being absolutely obsessed with them, collecting them. People have 50 plus of these cups. People have been camping out overnight to be the first one in the stores to get them. People have been fighting over them in stores. And since you've clicked on this video, you are probably one of two people. One, you're wondering why on earth would people do that? It's just a cup. Or, you're someone who's interested to learn more about Stanley because you already know why people are into them. Well, you've come to the right place because this video will answer all of your questions and more, so stay tuned. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life like Stanley Cups. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community post on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. First, I'm gonna tell you what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to give you a very, very, very brief history of the Stanley Cups. Then we'll talk about what is the big deal, why do people like them, and why have they blown up? Where you can get one, how you can get ones, because there are some tips and tricks you would need to know, some of the collaborations that have been offered, and different combinations that you can get in the Stanley Cup itself. We'll also talk about the resale market, which is huge for these, and real versus fake, because these are faked quite a lot. We'll talk about customizing, how you can get more information on the cups when you're looking for that. And we will end with a discussion on the negativity surrounding these cups. So why are people fighting over them? Why are people so obsessed with them? When after all, they are just cups. So let's get started. The Stanley brand was founded in 1913 by William Stanley, so that's where it gets its name. And it was primarily a drinkware company for outdoorsy people, so you would buy Stanley cups and take them camping, for example. A lot of us remember these from our childhoods, so our fathers or our grandfathers had them. Men tended to be the customer base here, and in fact their classic thermos was carried by World War II pilots. And the cup that I showed at the beginning is one of their classic original colors. I'll bring it closer. This is called Hammer Tone Green. And if you look at it up close, you can see that it has a texture to it. It's not smooth. It has a little bit of pebbling. And it's in this lighter green with the darker green accents. So what changed? How did they go from being outdoorsy thermoses to this obsessive phenomenon that we're seeing now? What is the big deal about these cups? Why do people like them so much? Well, I think the main reason is that they work so well. They are double wall stainless steel, just like many, many other cups that are double wall stainless steel, designed that way to keep hot drinks hot and cold drinks cold. But what really blew up Stanley as opposed to some other brands, was this TikTok video where a woman had been through a car fire and you can see in her video that her car is destroyed, but her Stanley cup still looks pretty fantastic. It didn't melt. And when she picks it up and shakes it, you can hear that there's still ice inside after having been through a fire. I have found that my cups, not going through a fire, keep ice for three days which is longer than they advertise on their website. More things people love about them are that the most popular cup, which is this size and shape, it's the Stanley Quencher in the 40 ounce. So that 40 ounces holds a lot of liquid. You don't have to fill it up as often throughout the day. It also has this tapered bottom, so it fits in cup holders. It has this handle, which some people find comfortable, I do. Some people don't. It has little screws underneath it, and I've had some people say that that bothers them, especially when the cup is full because it is pretty heavy when it's full. That hasn't bothered me though. While we're talking about some of the cons of the cup, I've heard people say that it tips over easily because it's top heavy and that base is more narrow. Personally, I've only found that to be an issue when the cup is empty because when it's full, it has enough weight in it to keep it upright and keep it from tipping over. It also has a fairly unique lid. So you can see here, the straw is on one side, not in the center. And when you take that straw out, it's a 12 inch straw, by the way, and the diameter is wider than a regular plastic straw you might be used to. So when you take that straw out, you see there's not just an opening there. 
it has this little rubber piece that helps keep it from spilling. Now it's not totally spill proof. If you tip it over, water can come out of that hole. It can also come out of the straw, but it is helpful to have that. Also, you can turn this piece on the lid and there's an opening there to drink straight from the cup. And then if you keep turning it, you can close it completely so that the straw part is not over that hole anymore, but it's just over solid plastic, so now it can't spill. These are also made with 90% recycled stainless steel. And we'll talk about real versus fake Stanley cups later in the video, but I will show you one indicator now, which is inside the cup. Way in the bottom, there's a little emblem embossed. That's an indicator that it's made of that recycled stainless steel. So if you come across a cup that doesn't have that, it might be fake. Also, the lid screws on and off, whereas I've seen some other cups where you just put the lid on like with a rubber seal, it's a push on, pull off situation. And those aren't always as secure as a lid that screws on. So those are the most practical reasons that people enjoy the Stanley Cups. But what about the other reasons? Why is one cup not enough? Why do people collect many of them? Well, one of the reasons for that is that once Stanley started becoming more popular, they started releasing more colors. And Stanley Cups, as cups and water bottles have been over the last many years now, they've become accessories to your outfit, not just something that's practical. So very similar to why someone might have multiple handbags in different colors, even sometimes the same style of bag in different colors. It's because it's an accessory. It coordinates with different outfits. But because people primarily use them as water bottles, it's also a health and wellness accessory and a very well done one. So it checks a lot of boxes. And I'll raise another point that I haven't seen anyone else mention. And that is, I used to be a middle school teacher and I've seen the evolution in the classroom of the different water bottles that students carry. And you figure out pretty quickly which brands are trendy at that time. And they become status symbols, just like any other accessory can be. A certain brand of shoes or a certain pair of jeans, for example. Here's my take on why water bottles like this have had this surge. It's a combination of a couple of things. One, and I'm taking the school where I worked as an example, students were required to wear uniforms. We also got to a point because of school safety that they were required to have clear backpacks. So that meant everyone is dressing the same and everyone has the same backpack. Now backpacks used to be one of the ways that students would express themselves and would fit in by getting the same kind of bag as their friends. Well, since they couldn't do that anymore, and since COVID hit and they weren't allowed to use the water fountains anymore, and were then required to carry water around with them throughout the day in order to have water. And the school did provide the little single-use water bottles for students. But most students at that time started carrying water bottles around. Now, I remember Hydro Flask being the first one that I ever noticed. That was very, very trendy and popular, and I was kind of blown away by how expensive they were. And I'm like, why would anybody pay that much? And then the Stanleys started popping up. And so that's where this trend came from, and in addition to the TikTok video, based on my experience. It's a combination of all of those things. Now, as a former teacher, I'm going to say something out there to parents who buy metal bottles for their kids to take to school. I have a request for you, please. Let me show you an example here with another cup I have. Yeah, I'm one of those people who has a few. This thing on the bottom, this is called a boot. It's a piece of rubber that fits around the bottom. In just about any metal water bottle or tumbler that you can buy, they make boots for. I will have some linked below. Please get a boot for it. The boots do two things. They protect your investment, because these are not cheap, from getting banged, dented, scuffed, scratched but they also protect your child and the other people in the classroom, including the teacher, from getting headaches, from hearing these metal bottles hit tables and floors constantly, all day. So please do everyone in the school a favor and get a boot for your kid's metal bottle. Okay, I will move on. So all those things contributed to the popularity of these cups and then marketing came in on top of that. Lots of social media posts, particularly on TikTok, as well as Stanley themselves creating what's called artificial scarcity. This is where you do things like limited editions. And it doesn't even have to be an official limited edition, but just creating fewer products 
then will meet the demand, especially when there's a lot of demand for that product. It makes people kind of go crazy and want that product even more and do all kinds of things they normally would not do like camp out overnight, fight other people in order to get this thing that they perhaps irrationally want so bad because they know it's a difficult thing to get. Now let's talk about the cost of these cups compared to some others. The Stanley Cup in the 40 ounce size is $45 most of the time. Some of the special editions come out at $50. They also make the same cup in a 30 ounce size. It is slightly shorter and slightly smaller. In person, I feel like there's a pretty big difference between these, even though it's only a 10 ounce difference. Personally, I do prefer the 40 ounce, just like so many other people, because of having to refill it less often. The 30 ounce size tends to retail for $35. So if we're talking about the most popular Stanley, the 40 ounce size, $45 to $50, the Hydro Flask, for example, is around that same price range. A lot of the other brands that have become popular and kind of trendy are also around that same price range. But you can get other cups that are cheaper in this size and a very similar style. Cups like Simple Modern from Target. And again, I will have all these linked below. If you're buying retail, the most popular places to buy a Stanley cup are going to be directly from Stanley from their website, Target, which we'll talk more about in a minute, Dick's Sporting Goods, Shields, which is another sporting goods company, Whole Foods, a lot of people don't know that Whole Foods carries Stanley, Amazon, you have to be a little careful there because there are the cups that are sold straight through Amazon, but then there are also resellers on there that can be priced differently and may not be as reliable as the ones that come straight from the Amazon store. So make sure you're checking that on the listing. And then there are lots of other smaller retailers that you can find online that sell these. In addition to finding them on the resale market, which again, we'll talk about in a minute. Now, how to get these cups is a different story. Just because the places I just listed sell them doesn't mean you can just go buy them there. It's not always that easy. Sometimes it is. If you saw the frenzy around some of the pink and red Valentine Stanley cups recently, that will illustrate to you <laughs> that it's not always easy to just go in a store and buy one or even go to a website and buy one. So here's how this works. Stanley has a core set of colors that they add to. Some of those colors sell out quickly. Sometimes they're restocked, sometimes they're not. They also do other colors that are more special editions or limited editions or seasonal. Some of those sell out immediately, others don't. Sometimes they're restocked and sometimes they're not. If you're buying a Stanley Cup online, with some of the new releases and the limited editions, you can find out ahead of time the day and even the time that those cups will drop or become available for purchase. It'll be different depending on the retailer. Let's say Stanley releases 10 cups, all different colors. That doesn't mean that all those 10 cups will be on the Stanley website. It also doesn't mean they'll be on all the other retailers' websites or in the other retailers' stores. Sometimes the cups are only available on the Stanley website. Sometimes they're only available at Target. Sometimes they're only available goods. Sometimes they're only available at Starbucks or only at Starbucks inside Targets. It gets complicated. So if you are someone who is looking for particular cups and you want to know about releases that are coming and limited editions and you want to have a small chance at least of being able to get them for retail, then what I would suggest is that you join the Facebook groups for the Stanley Cups. So Stanley collaborates with Starbucks to make some of these cups, but they also collaborate with other people. They've collaborated with country music star Lainey Wilson to create these two cups. They've also, through their Target partnership, collaborated with Magnolia. That's that company with Chip and Joanna Gaines that had that home improvement show where they would flip houses and then they've turned that into this huge company in Texas. So they have a line of Stanley Cups that's only sold at Target. One thing you may notice when you're looking at the variety of colors that Stanley has put out or you're looking at someone's collection who has like 50 cups. They'll have maybe six pink cups and maybe three of them look like they're identical to each other. There are differences. So let me show you what the differences can be. First, most obvious is the color of the body of the cup. 
You may sometimes have cups that have the same body color, but there are other things that are different about them. For example, the logo on the cup could be a different color. The handle could be a different color. The handles have a little piece of rubber on the outside and the inside. Sometimes, like on this cup, the rubber is the same color as the handle. Other times, and most of the time, it'll be a contrasting color. Same thing when you look at the top of the cup. It has this plastic piece here with a rubber piece in the middle. Sometimes those are the same, sometimes it has a contrasting color. The plastic piece there usually matches the handle and the rubber piece usually matches this rubber piece on the handle. You can also have different colored metal accents. So I've seen silver, which is their standard color. I've also seen gold and I've seen something more like a rose gold or bronze. The lids can also be different colors. Stanley has three standard lid colors. There's the milky color or frosted, like you see in the middle here. There's clear, and then there's black. And the black is translucent, so you can see through it a little bit. But in more rare cases, you'll see a colored lid, like this one is green. Again, translucent, so you can see through it somewhat. You can also have different straws. Generally, the straw is going to match the lid. The milky frosted lid, you get a milky frosted straw. Clear lid, clear straw. Black lid, black straw. Green lid, green straw. But they've also done a few special straws, like on this mistletoe twist or this arctic twist, where they have straws that are in a twisted pattern with two different colors, the red and white or the blue and white. Another difference between the cups is the different finishes of the body of the cup itself. So this one I showed you earlier has that hammered texture to it and it has a gloss finish. Whereas this one is called Glow. It's metallic but it has a softer finish so not high gloss. This is called matte, and it does have a very slight texture to it, but it's not glossy. There are also some that are high gloss, they call that gloss, and there are some called soft matte, which when you touch them are very smooth and soft to the touch and don't feel like metal. So if you are someone who is looking for particular cups and you can't get them retail, you just can't find it anywhere or it's been sold out or discontinued, there are a few things you should know about the resale market. First of all, you are very unlikely to find that cup at retail price. I've seen the cups go anywhere from retail plus shipping, which if you can find that for an authentic cup is pretty incredible. And I've seen cups go all the way up to a thousand dollars for a $45 cup, a thousand dollars. That doesn't mean somebody paid that much, but I've seen someone ask that much. Generally what you're going to see for most cups on the resale market is somewhere between about 75 to maybe 130-ish. It really depends on the cup. But then some cups that are more rare and high demand will regularly sell for around $300. So that's what to expect with price. Now another thing you want to know is that this is the second version of these Stanley quenchers. This is the quencher H2.0. So if you're looking for this latest version that has the handle that's shaped like this and it has all those options on the lid and with the straw, those little rubber bits, the H2.0 is the one you want. There is a previous version, and notice this has a light colored label. The previous version has a darker label, like black or really dark gray. That will have a few differences. It doesn't have the little rubber bits on the straw. The handle is shaped a little bit differently, but they are very similar, and there are colors available in the previous version that are not available, at least not yet, in the H2.0. Just be aware of that. Also know that a lot of the cups you'd be looking for are going to be available brand new still. A lot of people buy these to resell, so they will still be in the packaging. Some will come with boxes. So if you're looking for a particular cup, it's usually pretty easy to find a brand new one. You can also find some that are used and people often sell those a little bit cheaper because they don't have the label on. And this is where we talk about the authentic cups versus the fake cups. There are so many fake cups on the market, so be careful so you can be sure to get an authentic one, especially if you're paying a lot for it. First indicator that a cup is fake will be the price. If you see one that is below retail and still brand new, it's probably fake. Look at the bottom of the cup. The brand new cups will often still have this sticker on them. They do say made in China, but they also up here will have the color listed and they'll say Seattle, Washington, which is where Stanley is based. 
they'll have the barcode, they will look like this. I've seen listings that have a sticker on the bottom, but the sticker doesn't look like that. So that's something to watch out for. When the sticker is removed, the bottom of the cup looks like this. I have heard that on some fakes, some of the words on the bottom could be underlined. So if you see any underlining, that's a fake cup. Another thing to look for is that the logo might be too far down or the handle might be too far down. This is an authentic cup and you can see how little space there is between the top of the handle and that metal band. Sometimes you'll see the handles down quite a bit. Sometimes you'll see the logo down quite a bit. Those would be fake cups. Sometimes the metal band will be wider than it should be. That would be a fake cup. And sometimes the gap when the lid is screwed on, the gap between the lid and the top of the cup is gonna be too wide. So those are also things to look for. Labels like this one and packaging, like the boxes that the cups come in, are also faked. So just because it has a label does not mean it's an authentic cup. Just because it has a box does not mean it's authentic. One thing I've seen is on the Stanley Cup boxes, on the back there will be a rectangle that's printed onto the box itself. And on the authentic boxes, I've seen that be just an empty rectangle. On fake ones, I have seen a sticker placed over that rectangle that shows what color the cup is. Now, I don't know for sure that Stanley has never done that, but I do know for sure that everyone I've seen with that sticker has been fake. Also, when you get an authentic cup that's packaged from the manufacturer, the straw is already inside the cup. It will never have a plastic sleeve around it that you have to take off. So if you see a listing that has a picture of the cup and the straw is in a plastic sleeve, it's fake. Another thing to look for is in the photographs that are in the listing, look to see what's in the background. Sometimes you can get clues as to, you know, something's not right here. Also, especially if you're on sites like Poshmark, Mercari, eBay, look for other listings and see if you can find the same photos being used in multiple listings because that's a good indicator that something is suspicious. And look at the reviews for that seller. Those can help you out. If you're still not sure or if you're worried that maybe they've put photos of a real cup but they're going to send you a fake cup, one thing you can do is ask the seller for more photographs and specifically to ask for a photo of the actual cup you'd be receiving with a piece of paper that has the seller name and the date that you're asking for that cup and to make it even better something else you could do is ask for that but also ask for other objects in the picture things that everybody has but that wouldn't normally be in photos of a cup that's listed for sale so for example you could ask for the cup and the piece of paper laying on a pillow with a fork next to it things like that will help ensure that the person selling you the cup is showing you the cup that you're going to receive and that they actually have it in the first place. Now we talked about the boot earlier. Let's talk about a few other ways that people customize and decorate their Stanley Cups to make them even more personal and more of a form of self-expression. To me, the boots are a requirement for the reasons I mentioned earlier, and you can get them in solid colors. You can get them in patterns, like with hearts for Valentine's Day, for example. There are also textured boots. This waffle pattern I love, and I will link these below. I've also seen people put beaded bracelets around the bottom of the cup and they don't fall off because the boot keeps them on. And let me say this before we go any further about decorating your cup. When I first saw people decorating cups, I thought, that is insane. I would never do that. But one thing I have learned through these Facebook groups is that sometimes there will be a group of people in the same place that all have the same cup. For example, a cheerleader team may all have a Stanley Cup that's the colors of their school. So to differentiate this cup from that cup, they've come up with ways to personalize them. And that makes a lot of sense to so the boots, the bracelets. There are also charms that you can get that hang from the handle, from the bottom or on the top if you want. There are little metal pieces that you can put around here that have words stamped in them. There are also ribbons you can attach around the bottom and there are toppers. I have two, I can show you. So here's one. I think these are a fun way to do a seasonal piece that you can move from cup to cup so you don't have to buy one for every cup you have. You can get your name on it or not. You can get different colors. You can get different 
textures like this green that has glitter in it. And what you do is slip that over your straw and then it just fits on the top of the cup and you have a little decoration there. And with your name being on it, especially if you're in a situation like I just described, it's so much easier to find which cup is yours. I also have this one. It's on this little clear piece behind it, but it's the Valentine Dachshund. Got that one for Valentine's Day, by the way, so I just slipped that over my straw here, and it looks like that. Another reason you may want to think about decorating your cups is if you are someone who is prone to finding something you love and then collecting a whole bunch of them, but you don't want to collect a bunch of Stanley cups because you don't want to spend the money or you don't want to take up the space, or you don't want people thinking you're crazy because there is a lot of judgment about this. What you can do is find a color that you love or something that's pretty neutral and would work with a lot of other colors and then get a few accessories like a boot and a topper to dress it up and give it a different feel. That way you've only got the one cup or just a couple of cups to accessorize for different circumstances, different outfits or holidays or whatever it may be, and those couple of cups will work for all these different things. I think that's a really smart thing to do instead of buying a ton of cups, but either way, the choice is yours. You can also find people who can customize your cups by engraving them, so they can engrave different designs with machinery they have. You can have custom things done or things they've already designed. There are also people who will dip dye cups. So you can get a totally different color if Stanley hasn't released what you want or if the one you want is something that's super expensive, somebody may be able to make it for you. You can also have the lids dyed. And by the way, if you buy a cup and let's say it comes with a frosted lid but you really wanted a clear lid, Stanley sells those separately. All you have to do is change out that plastic piece on the top, which you can do. So here's a lid and then underneath there are these plastic pieces here. You just squeeze those together and that whole piece will come off and you can put that rubber piece on a different lid if you want. It's a little difficult to get that off and on, but it's designed that way so you can clean it. Now let's talk about some of the negativity that's been associated lately with these Stanley cups. And there are people who think it's crazy to have more than one of these cups. If you need one at all, you only need one because it's a cup. To those people, I would say, how many coffee cups do you have? Just one, right? Most people have a lot more than one. How many forks do you have? Because you only need one fork when you're eating and then you can wash that and reuse it. How many of anything reusable do you have more than one of? Having more than one Stanley cup is the same thing. People saying they're collectors of Stanley cups and having a whole bunch of them in a bunch of different colors and people thinking it's crazy or stupid to collect these cups. It is exactly the same as people collecting coffee mugs or teacups or teapots or designer handbags or action figures or cars or pens or salt and pepper shakers or any other of the millions of things that people collect. For those who say that $45 is way too much for a cup and you would never pay $45 for a cup, that's awesome because you don't have to. It's not a necessity. If you don't want to pay $45 for a cup, no one is going to make you do that. However, if you want to do it, you can. But I would point out that a $45 item that people collect is a whole lot cheaper than a lot of other things that people collect. I would also point out that for nice drinkware, which this is, $45 is not that expensive. A Waterford glass runs around $100. Fine china, a single glass can be several hundred. And the Waterford crystal and the fine china, those tend to only be used on rare special occasions, whereas the Stanley cups, People use them every day. So your initial cost is much less, but your cost per wear is so much better. Some people are saying people are crazy for camping out or lining up hours before a store opens in order to get just a cup. That may be the case, but again, it is no different than people lining up for just a TV for Black Friday sales or just a phone for the latest iPhone drop or just a pair of shoes for the latest, hottest new sneakers. And there are so many people complaining about reselling of these cups. People buy a bunch of the hard to get cups and then resell them for two plus times 
what the retail cost is. And people are very divided on that. On one hand, people say, well, it's not fair because I can't afford to pay that much more for the cup or I don't want to pay that much more and I should be able to get it at the retail price. Complaining about resellers price gouging and it's just so wrong to do that to people. The thing is, again, it's the same thing as what has happened with so many other things in our society when it comes to supply and demand. These are not necessities you don't have to have a Stanley Cup or a particular Stanley Cup. If you want it that bad, then figure out how to increase your chances of getting one, which I talk about in this video. But also, if you want the cup that bad and you're not able to get it, then you just have to be willing to pay above retail. Otherwise, you don't really want it that bad. And one of the arguments I've seen that I agree with is why are you mad at the resellers when Stanley and every other company on the planet pretty much, they're doing the same thing. They're taking something that costs this much and they're charging this much for it. So if you're going to be upset with anybody, why aren't you mad at Stanley instead of the resellers for charging that much in the first place and for creating artificial scarcity? And finally, the fighting that we've seen on the news to get some of these cups. This was specifically the Target Valentine's drop and the pink Starbucks collaboration. I'm in a bunch of Stanley Facebook groups, so I'm hearing the chatter in the community. And I've heard lots of stories of other stores where that didn't happen. And those kinds of fights that have made it to the news, those were very rare. Most people are not behaving that way. To the people that are, you were wrong. Stop that childish behavior. It's really pretty shameful. But to other people, don't let those few ruin it for everybody else. And don't take the behavior that you saw from them and extrapolate that to everybody who's interested in Stanley Cups, because most people don't behave that way. And that is everything I have to say. That is all of my knowledge about the Stanley Cups. I hope that was helpful for you, especially if you're someone who's just getting into them and figuring all this out, because it's a whole thing, as you've heard. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please let me know in the comments section what you think of all this. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you'll consider subscribing, and I hope to see you back here next time. Have a fantastic day. Bye.